Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all had a good Thanksgiving. Um, we are back out here on the lake crappie fishing again today. I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments about my electronics setup, side scan, down scan, how to find them, what do I look for. People are asking about my turret that I run my active target on. So I thought it might be time again to go through my entire electronic setup, how I find crappie, what they look like on side scan, down scan, a little bit about my settings. It would be an hour long video if I got into the whole deal, but uh, I'm just gonna do a broad overview, overview of how I find these crappie in the winter time, and we're gonna catch a few too. So should be a good one, y'all stay tuned. All right guys, first off, I wanna talk about how I'm set up right here at the console. So I've got two, I've got two HDS 12s right here, Lawrence HDS 12 Lives. Not the pros, just lives. I'll have the pros on my next year's boat, um, but there's not a ton of difference in them. There's a few differences, but these lives are perfectly fine. They're great units. I've run them for the past three or four years and I, I love them. Um, side scan and down scan and getting that set up right is a big, big, big key to finding crappie. Any kind of fish, bass, crappie, whatever you want to find. Um, just look at that picture right there. I mean, that's a that's a dang good picture on down scan and on side scan so all i'm doing i'm just idling down this bank right here you guys can see and i'm in uh, about 12 and a half 13 foot of water right now and i'm just idling down this bank and i'm looking for brush and i'm looking for schools of fish um and i run my side scan on 100 feet on either side and then i run my down scan I just run my settings on auto on it. Um, and like I said, I'm looking for schools of fish. Now, here's what I wanna show you guys. That right there is a little school of crappie, right there. Small school, not a real big school, but sometimes those smaller schools are easier to get to bite than those great big schools are. Uh, and there's a few more crappie kind of scattered right down through here, but I can tell by the way those fish right there are stacked up and as big as those dots are, sitting right in that little wad in that little school like that, that's crappie. All right, now you can see right here, I already idled over those fish once and I marked a waypoint right there, that little fish icon. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spin back around right here and get up here on these fish and we'll move up front and uh, and we'll see if we can get a couple of them to bite. Now, what one thing I wanted to show you guys is my settings, because you know some of you I know may have hummingbird, Garmin, but for you guys that have Lowrance, on side scan I'm running 800 kilohertz. If I'm scanning out past 10 feet deep, I'm always going to be on 800. If I'm 10 feet or less uh, in the springtime bass fishing or something, I'll run 455 because you can see out further with 455. I've got my contrast on 73% and I, and I like palette number six on this setup. Uh, every setup, every boat I've ever had is a little bit different. You have to play around with it. Uh, and, and everybody's eyes are a little bit different too. Um, but that's that on side, down, I've got uh, auto, plus, auto plus three. And this palette number nine is the best one on this particular setup. But I will say I like running uh, a split screen of down scan. Just sometimes things will show up better on this blue screen. Sometimes things will show up better on this palette number six screen. So I just like to have both of those. I pretty much, I've let down scan take the place of my 2D sonar. I don't use 2D very much anymore at all. So that's that. Let's go up front, see if we can catch us one. We just pulled up to this spot and I forgot to get hit record on my dadgum camera. Very first cast on that little old spot. Honest to goodness, I, I promise y'all, I've never caught a crappie off of that spot before in my life. And this is, this is gonna be real close to a two pound fish if it's not a two pound fish. I wish I would've hit record, but we'll get another one out of there. That's a doggone big one right there, buddy. I mean a slabber. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm not done talking about the electronics. I just wanted to cast in there. 
and see if we can get us one but guys everybody thinks it's rocket science this crappie fishing deal this ain't rocket science man it's easy anybody can do it look at that 192 right at a two pounder if he was fat he'd be two something that's a big old fish golly what a crappy get back in there we're going to get you buddy all right let me get back over here dad gummit i forgot to hit the record button that drives me crazy when i do that all right now let's talk about the front of the boat up here i've got two hds live 12 well this one is a, a 12 inch live pro and there's a reason for that i can go into that in a, in a later video but this one's just a regular old hds live um, I run this one for all my mapping, that one for active target, dedicated units. That's what those, that's what those units are used for. Sometimes I'll run a, a split screen, a 2D sonar right here, but not very often. Right there's that school of crappie that we marked just a minute ago. They're 25 to 30 feet right out there, right out in front of me. Now, all right, I've got active target two is what I'm running right now on that transducer. My, my complete setup, I've got a video back in the summer that I posted that says, uh, I think it's called my dream electronic setup. If y'all hadn't watched it, go back and watch it because I go into detail about why I run two active target transducers. But basically in a nutshell, I've got active target one on the trolling motor. I've got active target two on that blitz lures, live foot turret right there. I'm running the turret right now because I'm fishing isolated structure i like that turret for fishing isolated structure uh for fishing schools of fish because i can still use spot lock on my trolling motor and i don't have to try to keep the boat from drifting around uh it's it's just it's great for the way i crappie fish all right we just went in that school so let's see if we can catch another one of them big jokers out of there there he is right there we got him that's another good one too Honest to goodness, I've never fished this place before in my life. I just found it. I just seen them fish sitting there. Uh, and I don't, the way they're biting, I don't think a whole lot of other people have been fishing this spot either. That's another good fish. It ain't as big as that first one, but it's a doggone good one. Pretty crappie. I don't think anybody in the world that's a crappie fisherman would complain about that. Big old thick one, black nose. Let's get back in there and see if we can get us another one. Now, I had some people really asking me a lot of questions about the live foot transit or the, the live foot turret, what I like about it, what I dislike about it. Honestly, I don't have anything to say, I don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, I am definitely not sponsored by live foot or blitz lures. I, I don't know anybody there. I did my research. Um, and to be honest with you i was the most impressed with that one than any other turret that i looked at so that's the one i bought i just got on midway usa and bit the bullet paid the 1300 bucks and bought that sucker and i'll be honest with you i'm glad i did i, I really bought it i had crappie fishing in mind yes but i also had uh, bass fishing in mind also there's a fish right there he bit it on the fall another good crappie I also had bass fishing in mind whenever I bought it. Um, we were fixing to go up to Lake Champlain up in New York. And I was gonna use it up there, fishing a lot of isolated boulders and stuff. And uh, it came in handy for that too, but I really, really like it for crappie fishing. Another pretty fish right there. There he is. Another big old crappie. I think I barely got him, but that's all right. We got him. Still not as big as that first one, but boy, if I was eating a fish, that'd be the perfect size. I'm gonna throw them back today. I don't need any. I got plenty in the freezer, but. All right, y'all, I just idled over this point right here, and I saw a brush pile on side scan so I marked it and now I'm gonna go back over the top of it on down there it is right there on down scan you'll see that and as you can see see how much better it shows up on that blue palette than it does on that 
uh, amber palette. Maybe it's just my eyes. I don't know. Y'all tell me what you think, but I think it definitely shows up better on the blue palette. Now, last year, my my unit showed it up better on the, the amber palette. So like I said, every setup's a little bit different. But what I wanted to get back to, that little brush pile right there, you can see there might be three or four fish on that, but there's not hardly any fish on that. So I'm just gonna keep going. Now, I'm gonna save that waypoint because I'm gonna come back out here someday and I'll be like, hey, I'm gonna run over here on that, that brush pile I marked out off of that point. And I'm gonna idle over it and see if it, it, you may come back tomorrow and there could be a hundred crappies sitting on it. But right now, in this moment, there's not any crappie there. So we're gonna keep idling. Now see, here's a bunch of bait fish. And that's another thing that you're gonna have to learn as far as training your eyes. And, and you'll hear me say that a lot. You see how small and that looks like a cloud? Those are bait fish, there's no doubt. Those are thread fin shad is what those are. Um, and when you see bluegill, those dots will be a little bit bigger, a little more defined. This is probably a bass right here. You can see that's a pretty good sized dot. And then crappie will be an even bigger dot than bluegill. So there's some bluegill right there. See those bluegill and how small those dots are? Now there's one or two bigger dots right up in here in the top. Those are probably crappie. But you just idle down these bluff walls and sometimes you'll find some great big schools of crappie for sure. It's a good place to um, it's a good place to start on any lake this time of the year. Guys, let's talk about mapping and shading real quick because that's very important when it comes to graphing. The way I've got my map shaded right here, and once again, this is just a Lawrence HDS Live 12, uh, and this is just the CMAP built-in Contour Plus map is all this is. It's built into the Live, every single one of them. Um, so this is Lawrence base map, and it may be different on your particular lake, but it's it's pretty darn good mapping on this lake and all the lakes that I fish around here. It's it's really good mapping on the Tennessee River too, which is impressive. All this you see up here in red, out to green, out to this dark blue, it starts shallow and works its way out. So that's very important because I know when I get out here on the edge of where it starts going from this light blue, from the light blue to the dark blue out here, that's where I need to be graphic. I, I wanna be looking in that 12 to 18 foot range. Right now I'm dropping off into about 19 feet and see I'm getting out there in that light blue. So I'm gonna slide back up just a little bit. Very, very important to stay in the right depth range. If I'm, if I'm out here in this 47 feet of water, chances are, guess what? I'm not gonna find any schools of crappie. So if you wanna be the most efficient when it comes to graphing, make sure that you stay in the right depth range. That's a big, big key. All right guys, something else to think about when we're talking about side imaging. You can see right here on my Phoenix, I've got my foot off the gas and I'm just dead idling and my boat will idle at about 3.4 miles per hour. Side imaging is made um, to get the optimum picture from about three and a half up to about five miles per hour. So just keep that in mind because speed is a big, big deal. If you get too fast, your picture's gonna be real distorted. You're not gonna be able to see what's going on. And on the other hand, if you get too slow, uh, your picture will look real distorted too. So try to keep your speed when you're scanning and you're looking for fish, try to keep it between about three and a half and five miles per hour. Now, I know on a hummingbird, you can go in and you can mess with that scroll speed um, and you can kind of mess with that a little bit and get that dialed in. On a Lowrance, you can't mess with scroll speed. It's all built in. It's just one, one scroll speed all the time. So something to keep in mind, but speed is a big, big deal. Whatever's giving you the, the clearest picture, that's how fast you need to be going. There's one. I can see them in there and I finally talked one on the bottom. That's a doggone good one too. Mm -hmm. That's a slab. I'm not out of grab that one. Come here, boy. Mm. That's another big one there. It's drizzling rain out here. It's cold. And to be honest with y'all, I didn't wear enough doggone clothes today. I'm a little bit chilly, but that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I like that. I hadn't talked a lot about my setup today, but if 
you follow my channel, you've seen this set up a lot. I'm just throwing a little trout magnet with a, uh, a 164 ounce jig head. Just a killer little blade, bait. I catch a lot of crappie on that little bait. One following it right now. I don't know if he's going to get it or not. Come on, boy. Yep, he got it. He followed it up out of there. He just couldn't stand it. He had to have it. Come here. Big old fish. Big crappie in that pile. Come here. Come here. I'll be still, boy. There he is. That's a good fish. I just got a pink head. That little trout magnet. Man, that's a good one. That color is called rainbow glitter. It's just a real natural looking little color. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said in the, the intro, I've had a lot of comments lately about electronic setups. Um, and I realize a lot of you are new, a lot of you hadn't seen the videos I've done in the past, uh, me talking about my electronics and all that. And that is, I mean, that's the quickest way that we have nowadays. Technology has come so far. You can put in like, you know, three years ago, I didn't know anything about this lake. Now I know where there's a hundred different schools of crappie out here. It's crazy what you can learn with down scan, side scan. Um, forward facing sonar, active target, all that stuff. When you learn how to work all of it together and use it to your advantage, it's pretty wild uh, what you can do. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little something. Hit that subscribe button if you did. Leave me a thumbs up. Turn that notification bell on. And leave me a comment. Always like hearing from you guys. I'll see you next time right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.